Oh, sure. Yeah. Hey, guys. How's it going? Tufty here. Yeah, I'm only, I'm only going to do a video, mate. I don't know why I did it like that. I just felt like a good idea. Anyway, how's it going? I can't believe it. It's the last ever official payload map. I've done all the other ones, so check them out if you haven't already. Some of them are a little bit old and perhaps a little bit cringy. The actual sentry positions, at least, should hold up really nicely. But yeah, don't worry. What I'm probably going to do is I'm going to move this series onto like attack and defense maps, maybe some cough maps, because I know a lot of you guys enjoy watching these and I certainly enjoy making them too. As you can imagine, these do take a while to put together because I have to play the map over and over again and sometimes you get rolled and sometimes maybe you're looking for some specific footage and you, you know, you don't even get a chance to build in that spot. So yeah, this isn't a super regular series, but it will continue. And today we're looking at Snowy Coast. I've been trying out some really standard classic spots on this map and I've been trying out some really weird and wonderful crazy spots too. I've put together a collection of my favourites that I wanted to share with you guys, some of the ones that I think are really strong. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy. Let's take a look at the map and at the first area of Snowy Coast. So the enemy team will be coming from these two areas here out of spawn. The most classic and most standard spot is on top of this slope here. And to be fair, I'm going to be talking about it today because it is a good spot. It has loads of cover from the fence above it and it can shoot, you know, in both directions and cover both routes through. The second most common spot I've seen and I've tried out is on the very right hand side of the screen here. I'm not going to talk about this today. For me, it doesn't feel as strong as the one we just talked about. And it also feels like you're really separate from your team there. And if you want to retreat, then you can't really do that because you're kind of stranded over the right hand side of the map. Another spot I'll briefly talk about is a little bit further back, pretty much directly on the point here. This should on paper work really well, but I've not had a load of luck with it. So I'll talk a little bit about this in just a sec. So the first spot, super standard on top of this slope here. You can put your other buildings just in cover in that little you know, nook there. What I like about this is you can very easily retreat to the next area of the map if things are going pear shaped. And that's really important. You need to be in the mindset that wherever you build here, you're likely to go down at some point. You know, it's very rare that you're gonna hold for the entire duration of the map and staying alive, getting to the next area of the map and building up quickly is so much more valuable than trying to tank your sentry gun. Anyway, once I'm set up, as always, I like to keep my distance from my buildings, keep them healed up, spam out any damage I can to the enemies and keep an eye out for spies. So yeah, all in all, a pretty decent spot. You've all seen it before, um, but there's a good reason for it. It works pretty nicely. The only downside is that there are a few sight lines really far to the right there where you can go around and uh, put damage onto it out of its range. But the reason it's so close to the fence and why that's nice is because as a demo man, it makes it really difficult for you to throw spam over the fence and actually get damage onto it. And that leads us quite nicely onto this second spot, which, you know, is indeed a bit further back. And that's probably why it doesn't work so well, because people can see it very early on. And a decent demo man should be able to throw grenades over and actually take it out. But that being said, I do want to try this one out a bit more. It's got a great sight line to the area in front of it. And I think it has a lot of potential for being a decent spot if you don't have a, a good demo man on the opposing team. And obviously the plus side is if you want to retreat, it's really easy to do so. Okay, so the second area of the map is where it gets really interesting. The enemy team will be coming from the top here. The first spot is a bit of a personal favourite. Okay, it doesn't actually work that well, but I've got this weird idea in my head that it should work. It's just on the left here, and I'll talk a little bit more about this in just a sec. But a much stronger spot, and definitely the best spot in this area in my opinion, is behind these barrels just here. You've got loads of cover. The blue team will be focused on the red team's spawn area. And so this, you know, draws their fire in another direction really distracts them, creates a kind of crossfire. You've got some metal behind you. It's a great versatile spot. And these are the kind of spots that I really enjoy using personally. The spot you will see everyone use in every single game is just in this little cubby hole here. Personally, it doesn't suit my play style. You really do have to just tortoise shell. But the other reason is when I'm on the blue team, I find it really easy just to take out by doing this. Not everyone has discovered you can do this perhaps, but yeah, as a demo man, it's dead easy to take out from this angle. But yeah, by no means am I saying it's a terrible spot. It does work surprisingly well often. It's just one I don't personally like using myself. As alternatives to that, you know, I'm always encouraging you guys to mix it up. Why not try building a bit further in this corner here? Or if you're feeling just completely wild, why not do a little jump up onto this ledge here if you have time? Bit of a gimmick, a little bit impractical, but can work really nicely and is really fun to try out. Okay, so let's take a look at this first position. The first thing I do is put that dispenser right in that corner there. It means it's very protected from any incoming damage. When you put the sentry gun down, make sure there's no long range sight lines to it. Just here works good for me. 
And also, to be honest with you, I'd probably not recommend putting the telly there because I do have to jump over it a lot and, you know, a bit freaked out about being telly fragged. So you might want to find a better spot for it. But yeah, anyway, once you're up and running, this can work pretty well. I mean, this is definitely one I enjoy trying out. You know, it has the element of surprise. Not many people build here. Your main vulnerability is going to be basically, you know, soldiers or demo man who can use the cart as cover and just peek that corner. But that being said, in this footage here, I'm able to tank, you know, a couple of pretty decent pushes by the enemy. I was able to fend off a buffed heavy there. But if you do find that you go down, which is, is more than likely in this spot, uh, what you can try and do is kind of back off into this room here. Sometimes you can kind of go unnoticed so you can get set back up again and be a bit of a nuisance. Okay, so this one is a beauty. So to begin with, I'm just building quite hidden around the corner. That is because I'm worried about how quickly they're pushing the cart. I can move that later when I'm feeling more comfortable. There's a couple of really nice things about this spot. One, like I said, you've got so much cover. You can get set up completely out of sight, out of mind. Two, you can run back to the corner behind you and use your rescue ranger to heal your weapon. And three, it causes a crossfire. So most of your team will be on the other side of the map. And so the enemy team is having to focus on incoming damage from two directions. Sometimes it's worth mixing up exactly where you put your sentry gun just to keep the enemy on their toes. So I've moved it back a bit here. Then later I move it forward again. Only obviously if you feel like you've got a lot of downtime. And if you do go down and things go really pear, like in this case, like I said, you're in loads of good cover around here. It gives you time to get set back up again. You could even do it right behind these barrels. Let the enemy team focus on the spawn, build up, and then you can move it back out again when you're ready. Another thing worth mentioning is that you can put a telly on top of this building here. Sometimes it goes unnoticed. A nice little useful spot to bear in mind. And finally, if you are taking damage and you feel like it's about to go down, you know, obviously rather than waiting for it to go down, if you can save it, that's even better. Just pull it back a bit. It's still gonna be really useful if it's a bit further back and you can always move it back forward again when you're ready. So just very quickly, like I said, if you are gonna use this area to the left, you know, just mix it up a bit. It gets a bit dull using that same corner. I found just on the edge of this fence quite nice, having a little base in this corner, it's a little bit different. And if you're feeling a little bit cray cray, you can jump up to this ledge here. You gotta be really careful because the enemy team may be coming through here, but if you're quick, it's a bit gimmicky, but it's actually a really nice spot as well. We're only gonna spend a little bit of time looking at this part of the map because it's very rare that you can actually build a sentry gun here. The enemy team will be coming from this direction here, but the one spot I managed to make work is just on this ledge in this tunnel here. This will not work every time by any means. Usually they're storming through this area and you'll wanna hold a bit later on in the map. But if you find that for some reason they're slowing down just before here, try this out. It works really well for me and it's surprisingly tricky to take out for the enemy team. The second area, I'll talk about these positions all together, is inside this tunnel here. Now this is by far the strongest position to build on this map. I'm sure you've all played in games where the enemy team have had a base here and it's been completely impenetrable. Yeah, really good spot, covers most of the routes through quite nicely. You can flank all the way around and I have a couple of techniques I use as a demo man to take out this spot, but for the majority of scenarios, it works really well. Finally, the third spot I'll talk about, which is within this indoor area. Bit of a fun one, but it's just on this ledge here. You're gonna have to jump up here or use your dispenser to get up here. What I do like about this spot is if someone is building in the other position we just looked at, then this is a great kind of secondary position to stop people flanking around this side. So yeah, this first one, for some reason in this game, we were lucky enough to be able to hold around this area here, which gave me a chance to explore different positions. And this one worked really well. As you can see, we've got a few teammates in this open area. So as the enemy team come through, they're focused on us and they're getting shot from the tunnel from quite a long range. And it's a really dodgy angle for them to be able to, you know, attack my sentry gun from. I'm running around like a loony, staying away from it. I can use my rescue ranger if necessary. And if anyone does flank from around the other side, I can just sort of support my sentry gun and put a bit of pressure onto them. So obviously in most games you won't be able to do this, but if you do get a chance, definitely worth checking out and playing around with. Okay, so here's the beastly spot we were talking about. Whack your sentry gun on this ledge here. I've tried further to the right on top of those logs, but right here is the best and I'll tell you why in a sec. Dispenser can go kind of either side to you, probably left might be better, but um, either works. As you can see, it's only level two, but still it's able to fend off their first push. And as soon as you've got a couple of teammates with you, this becomes a really strong, impenetrable defense. 
So yeah, in this case, like I said, I tried on top of these planks of wood here. As you can see, a heavy can sit in that tunnel there and pump out damage and it's slightly out of range. So you'll probably want to keep it behind that pillar. I think the main vulnerability for this spot is people coming from this left route. So if you have a second engineer building here, then, you know, it's crazy how good this spot is. But for some reason, he decides to move it right next to my sentry gun. Who knows why? But anyway, yeah, a really strong spot. You've probably seen it loads of times. It had to have a mention. And if you're being rolled and you're having a really hard time, then definitely worth trying out. So this final one I mentioned, again, a bit of a gimmick, but you can jump up using a dispenser or you can jump up with your Wrangler and then just put the sentry gun on the edge and it can defend this second route through really nicely. If you're the only engineer, I would not recommend doing this by any means, but you know, I like to share these more crazy ones with you guys, like I said, so I'm not just talking about these really classic spots that you see all the time. Okay, so the next area of the map I'm gonna talk about is inside this room here. The area outside you'll never really get a chance to build in, but inside here, there's loads of great spots. The enemy team should mainly be coming through this route at the top of the screen here. The first real simple spot is in this window here. This spot is, I'm pretty sure, literally designed for a sentry gun. It covers this inside area really nicely. It has a great angle of attack, which we'll look at in a sec, but obviously you're very vulnerable from people flanking all the way around, so that's something you have to bear in mind. Another spot you'd see an awful lot is in this corner here. I don't particularly like this because one, you have this window that means the enemy team can kind of see your every move. It also doesn't have a great line of sight. It just has a very narrow line of sight. So that's another reason I'm not gonna be talking about it today. But another spot you may want to consider that I find interesting, it seems a bit weird just to have it right in the open here. But actually when we look at it in a sec, you'll see that it's actually really well covered. And finally, another really strong position is just on top of this staircase here. Surprisingly, you don't see this very often, but it's actually really strong. I guess most people at this point are building at the very last point outside of this building, but if you can get a sentry gun up here, definitely do so. Okay, so this first one is dead simple. Sentry gun, just at an angle, looking out of this window here. Like I said, it's designed for a sentry gun. You've got a huge metal pack up here as well to help you get set up. Dispenser just in that corner there. And as you can see, as they start pushing the cart, they're not even inside the building yet. And this sentry gun can see them from a really long range. It puts out a ton of damage and it makes it really difficult for them to be able to attack you back. But the real downside here is, well, two things. Obviously, if a spy comes along, you're normally all on your own and a good spy might be able to take you out. And secondly, if anyone flanks around, you know, it's really vulnerable from behind, basically. The second one I talked about, so take a look at this. As you can see, if I put my sentry gun just here, everything in front of it is in range. So for me, that's kind of like a fundamental rule of a good sentry spot, having it so the enemy can only attack it if they're in its line of sight. And this spot definitely follows that rule. But yeah, as you can see, as they're pushing the cart around these boxes, it immediately starts firing on them and does a surprising amount of work. And again, it might not be the most efficient spot at this part of the map, but I do like to share these ones I kind of played around with that are a little bit more unusual. And the one that I think possibly is the most efficient spot in this area is on the top of this staircase here. So the nice thing about this is obviously you can get set up really quickly because you're right next to spawn. And um, the dispenser can go either side of your gun, uh, probably just behind you there works well. And as you'll start to see in this footage, it shoots onto the enemy like before they even know where it is. You know, it has a really sneaky little line of sight past the truck down onto the cart. And so once I'm set up, as always, I tend to like hovering a little bit further away from my base, uh, in this case down on the floor here. You can kind of see some grenades bouncing off the scenery around it, so it has really good cover here. A soldier or a sniper may have a sightline onto it. I'm sure there is one somewhere, you know, if they're very sneaky. But with your teammates around, distracting the enemy, you know, it's not easy to actually take out. So yeah, I really recommend you guys playing around with this one. But yeah, this area in general, definitely worth checking out and playing around with. Okay, so the very last area of the map. The enemy team can come from these three directions. One spot you might see quite a bit is up in this same area we looked at before, but when this huge door in the middle opens, the little window on the right there shuts, and therefore this position becomes way less viable. You know, it's still okay, it can shoot down onto the cart as they go past, but anyone flanking on the very right-hand side of the screen, you know, they can see through the fence, they can see where you are, and they have plenty of time to take you out. So I'm not gonna talk about that one, Another one I'll briefly mention is the idea of building a little bit further to the right. Now, obviously this on its own is not ideal. This alongside another sentry spot on the other side of the map, it can be a great supporting sentry spot. And of course it's great at protecting this one flank to the right hand side. You also see an awful lot of people building underneath this area here. I had very little luck with this. Felt again, very restrictive. It's really easy to spam grenades into that corner. 
I much favor building on top. It gives you a bit more room to breathe. Again, this is a very standard one and it works quite well, but I did want to talk about a specific technique I like to use where I build a little bit further back, like around here. This is when, if the enemy team are doing really well and they're pushing very quickly, sometimes building a bit further back can be a really worthwhile tactic to use. So I'll talk in a bit more detail about this in just a sec. And then finally, I wanted to talk about when you're getting rolled, how you can make a last ditch attempt to defend the cart. And this is one of the spots I like to use in that scenario. So yeah, an alternative to building on this ledge here is building on top of this truck like so. I've got my telly and my dispenser tucked away in the corner there. To be fair, my dispenser could be more useful if it was elsewhere, so it's kind of questionable. But as we can see, anyone trying to flank around this route here, it can take them out quite easily. Obviously it doesn't reach the other side of the map, so I definitely only recommend this spot if you're using it as like a support sentry if you like, for another sentry that's further to the left. Okay, so this is another very standard position on top of this ledge here. You can run back to spawn, or you've got a big metal pack underneath you, so you can get built up fairly quickly. You can whack your dispenser just around the corner there, out of sight. The one main reason I find this really uncomfortable is simply because if people flank around the other side, they have sight lines onto it and they're out of range of your sentry gun. You'll see it in the footage here. I start taking damage and my sentry gun's not doing anything. So although it is a decent spot and it can work well, it does make me uncomfortable for that reason and I've very rarely been able to keep it up for very long here. But the other alternative technique I wanted to talk about was building it just behind this corner here, especially if, so say if you keep getting taken out every time you're trying to put it up, you can build a little bit further back here so it can just about see down onto the car and you're probably thinking that's ridiculous, that's not going to defend the cart, but you'll see in a sec, a heavy tries to push past and my sentry gun actually does manage to take him out. So as you can see here, the heavy's pushing, he's taking cover behind the cart and yet still, my sentry gun can shoot down onto him and he found it very difficult to get damage back onto it. Often you find yourself being completely swarmed and you could argue maybe going engineer is not the greatest idea if this is happening. But saying that, if you really want to go engineer, these are some spots you can use as like a last ditch attempt. Just popping it behind this cover here, it gives you time to at least get it up. And as they're trying to rush you, it can help support your team. And actually you might be surprised by putting it here, it can just about see onto the car as it pushes to the very last point. If you are doing this kind of thing, I'd probably argue that a mini sentry might do the job better. Another option is to build it a little bit further forward behind these boxes here. Again, some really clutch gameplay here. You know, we're probably gonna lose this, but this is just a last ditch attempt to get some damage out and to slow them down. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I imagine some attack and defense maps would be a great place for this series to go next. If there are any maps in particular you wanna see, let me know in the comments below and I will get to work. As always, these are just a few of the spots I like to use. Please let me know if I missed any out, or if you think there are some other better spots out there, let me know, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.